Hello to everyone. Welcome to the Beauty of Grace channel. I'm so glad that you took some time out of your busy schedule to come and listen to the good news of Christ. And um, make sure you have your Bibles with you so that we can go over. We have a number of scriptures we're going to go over today. But I'm just so glad that you're here. And I got my Zumba shirt on today. Yeah, Zumba. Zumba. I love and I enjoy doing Zumba and uh, but anyway we got to get that exercise guys right yeah but anyway we're gonna go ahead and go into the Word of God on today we're gonna talk about today about don't give up don't give up whatever the dreams that God has given you whatever you're trying to accomplish in your life your purpose your destiny don't give up all right so we're going to come out of second corinthians first chapter starting with the third verse and what we're talking about uh in this chapter is is talking about the apostle paul and paul went through a lot of trouble a lot of testings a lot of tribulation he's at absolutely one of my favorite uh apostles and um, this is what Paul talks about as far as what he says about with trouble, okay? But even though Paul went through trouble, even though Paul went through hard times, he never did give up, all right? He continued to do what he was called to do. And um, let's go on to verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all our comfort. Verse 4 says, He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. So when we go through trouble, and let's just say this trouble affects everybody whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, as long as you continue to live on this fallen earth, on this cursed ground, there will be trouble. Uh, and a lot of our trouble comes also from, at the very beginning, when Adam sinned against God. When that sin came into this world, sickness came, poverty came, and then now we have funerals. We had to have hospitals because of what Adam done. So we have to also realize that, that because of what Adam done, this is why there is a whole lot of trouble in this world. God didn't never intend for man to get sick. He didn't never intend for man to age. He didn't never intend for man to be poor. And because of what Adam did, all these things came into play. Okay, a lot of times we do blame God for a lot of this stuff, but um, sometimes we can cause our own trouble. Some of it is what Adam did, the trouble that, that came into this world. Now, because we're in the world, we still experience trouble. So... Anyway, even though we go through trouble, even though we go through rough times, we are able to comfort others. That's what the scripture says. We can give them the same comfort that God has given us. And sometimes, guys, just an encouraging word to someone or just calling someone or texting someone, just letting them know that I'm thinking about you. It means so much. A lot of people don't might not have family that encourage them or, or a lot of friends. But um, sometimes we don't think, you know, just a little text or to tell someone I'm thinking about you, maybe someone you know might have had a little surgery or going through some tough times. Just let them know that, that you care, okay? But trouble, the thing about trouble is, um, it also can mean pressure 
It can mean distress. It means affliction, anguish, and burden. And I don't think no one likes to go through trouble. I know I don't. I do not like going through trouble. But also, sometimes during trouble, we learn how strong we are in Christ. We learn also about our faith in Christ. Um, but one thing about trouble, it doesn't last always. So we have to remember not to give up when trouble comes. Not to give up when tough times comes. A lot of times, God will show us a dream about our purpose, about our life, but he doesn't show you what's going to happen before you get to that destination. And some, a lot of times he has to prepare us to get to that destination. We just can't get to it so fast. We might not be able to handle it. That's why people that win the lottery, a lot of times if they never really had money, then all of a sudden they got money. Sometimes they can't handle it. And sometimes in, in a, a few years after that, they end up broke. So God likes to prepare us and get us ready for the purpose that he has for us so that we can handle it. You know, I was listening to um, Tyler Perry, and probably by now everyone knows that he uh, has a uh, Tyler Perry Studios um, that he has built over there in Atlanta. And I think it was almost 400 acres. And he has about 12 sound stages, something like that. But uh, there were years before this all came to pass that Tyler Perry was homeless. You know, and also during, it was, I heard him say that for, for seven years, he kept trying to, he was putting on plays, but nobody was coming. And he kept trying. And he kept trying, you know. And he said that one time he even, you know, he would, he was, at that time he was using, he used his mother's credit card up. I think he spent over $300 because when he would try to put these plays on, people still had to be paid. And it got to the point where he said, I'm going to just try it one more time. And if it doesn't work this time, he says, I'm going to just go and get a regular job. Because his mom, I think, had been telling him at one time, why don't you just go get you a regular job, an eight to five, you know. But Tyler had a, he had that dream. And he had, I believe he just had a story to tell. And this was his calling and what he uh, was called to do. And he said when he was doing that, that uh, last play, when he was getting ready to, do the play. He said he happened to look out the window and there was a whole line of people out there waiting to come to the play. So that's why we can't give up even when it gets rough. Even when we say, you know, this is, you know, this is not working. This business I'm trying to do, it's not working. This job that I'm going to every day, you know, I'm not seeing a promotion. I'm not seeing where I can advance on this job. It's just not working. But what we have to remember that God has a timing. And, you know, we pray and ask God, Lord, I want this. I want this promotion. I want this business. I want this over here. I want this. I want that. But he has a timing for that. And we have to be prepared. But there is a process that you have to go through before you get to that destination. It just doesn't happen overnight. All right. So let's go to verse 5. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. So there is times as Christians, just because you're a Christian, there are times you're going to just go through some persecution. Okay. There are times, now I'm not talking about now sickness. You know, God doesn't give us sickness to teach us lessons. That's a lie. Okay. Sometimes traditional, some traditional churches have taught that, that God wants us to go through sickness so that he can teach us a lesson. That's not true. Uh, we're under grace today. 
and uh, God has taken all of our sins. We have the forgiveness of sins. And so he doesn't punish us with sickness because we fail or because we mess up, okay, or because we sin, all right? Sickness, sometimes people just get sick, okay? So we rebuke that. We rebuke sickness, and we know that by his stripes we are healed. Okay, he doesn't give a sickness, but persecution where somebody's talking about you, where somebody don't like you, you know, where you might have a, a supervisor that's hard to get along with, you know. So sometimes we go through these things and sometimes we may ask God, you know, remove this out of my life, remove that. And sometimes God will take us out of trouble. He will deliver us out of trouble. But there are times where we have to endure, and he helps us to get through it, the trouble. Because we know that he is with us always, and that's what separates us. Even though the world, there's trouble in the world, as Christians, we have help. The world has to use their own resources, okay? They do the best that they can do in their own strength, in their own human effort. But we have um, the Holy Spirit that helps us during these perilous times, during these trying times. Okay, so this is what Paul was talking about. Verse 6 says, even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. Okay, verse seven says, we are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. So God gives us comfort, you know, during these times. He gives us comfort. That's why don't give up. All right, don't hurt yourself. Don't think about suicide. Okay, God needs you here. And he has a purpose for your life. And there is meaning in your life. Okay? Don't give up. That's why in Christ, we have hope. And that hope is a confident expectation of good. We might not see it right now, but eventually we'll see it. If you are sick in your body, know that by his stripes, you're healed. Well... The doctor said, Lynette, so-and-so. Okay, I understand what the doctor said and what the test may say. The test may say you have this or that. All right? That's what the test may say. All right, but what did the word say? The word says, by his stripes, you're healed. But I still have pain in my body, but by his stripes, you're healed. And you have to stand on that word. And don't give up on that word just because you don't see it right away. All right? So it's a fact that those x-rays say, okay, you have diabetes. That's a fact because that's what the x-rays say, right? But the truth is you're healed. That's the truth. All right? So you stand on that. Stand on that word if you're going through uh, an affliction in your body. You stand on that word. Because Jesus already took that affliction on the cross. It has already been dealt with. Okay? We have victory over sickness. Sickness is behind us now. Poverty is behind us now. Death is behind you now. Well, you may say, yeah, but people are still dying. Christians still die. Well, the Bible says they really sleep. Okay? They still are in the arms of Christ. They go into the arms of Christ when a believer dies. Okay, and he's going to resurrect all those that have died in him. He's going to resurrect their bodies again, and they're going to have new bodies. So all of these things, are death is still behind you. Okay, so know that Jesus has already overcome all that stuff. All right. So we have the victory. So we have to stand on what we have and what Christ has done. 
All right. Verse 8 says, We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought we would never live through it. Have you ever gone through some times that are so tough that you wonder if we're going to be able to get through it? And this is what Paul is saying. He said, we were crushed and overwhelmed. Sometimes, guys, we can feel crushed. Sometimes we can feel defeated. But don't give up. Just because you feel that way, don't give up. Because a lot of time in our minds, a whole lot of thoughts go in our minds, doesn't it? A lot of depressing thoughts and oppressing thoughts come in our mind. But Paul says, but we thought we would never live through it. See, we thought. And then in verse 9, he says, in fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we start relying on ourselves and learn to rely only on God who raises the dead. He said, we thought we were going to die. And sometimes we can go through things where we just think, I'm not going to make it through this. You might got a, a found out on your job that your job is about to close down, about to lose your job. There might be trouble in your marriage and you don't think you're going to, this marriage is going to make it. You might be, might be going through something with your children or might be some problems going on. If you're in school, going, some problems going on at school. I don't know how I'm going to make it through this class. But then Paul said, we start relying on ourselves and to rely only on God. You know, um, and, and I'm going to share this. Uh, when I first, um, I have two children now, but my very first pregnancy that I had, uh, I miscarried at, I think, I about eight weeks. And I was devastated. And uh, the thing about it was I worked at the health department and I worked in a program where I actually worked with pregnant uh, women. And I did um, education and counseling on um, pregnancy and parenting, and I taught Lamaze classes and so forth. I was a social worker there. And so it was very hard for me after I had my miscarriage to go back to work. Um, it, it was tough. It, it was really tough. Um, but the thing about it was when I would meet other women that had miscarried, I would tell them my story. And that gave them some comfort. Because a lot of times when a woman miscarries, a lot of times we blame ourselves. We feel that it's something that we have done or something that we didn't do. And really, the doctor had said there was nothing that I had done or there was nothing wrong with my body. It's just something that happens. And a lot of things we can't explain that happen to us. Um, as we live in this world and that's what we have to remember that this is a fallen world okay so sometimes things just happen you know uh, we, we like to make the best decisions that we can make we like to live a we want to live a prosperous and victorious life but sometimes things happen and we always try, and a lot of times we try to find an answer for something. Well, why did this happen to them? They were such good people, and why did this happen? A lot of times we can't explain that. But we do know that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. But yet things still happen in our lives, and we can't explain. But we have to still know that we rely only on God. That's what Paul them came. Paul came to the realization that we rely only on God. Because a lot of times we try to do it. 
we try to do this, do that, make the situation better, do this and do that. You know, yeah, we do what we can do, but it could have come. Sometimes it just comes to a point that only God can get you out of that situation. Only the Lord can deliver you. That's just how it is. Verse 10 says, and he did rescue us from mortal danger, and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him, and he will continue to rescue us. Okay. And so what, what happened with Paul in this uh, uh, part of Asia? Uh, they were making goddesses. And they were worshiping these goddesses during this time. And Paul started preaching Christ. <laughs> and I guess people stopped buying the goddesses. And um, so what happened, the people that were making the goddesses, the silversmith and all that, they were making these goddesses, it started affecting their money. And uh, then they started causing a riot against Paul and some of the other people that were with him. And they had to do for all what they could do to get Paul out of that area um, because they were really going to try to kill him. Okay. And so, but Paul said that God rescued us. And he said, we have placed our confidence in him. And we have to remember that even regardless how bad things can get sometimes, that God is there, that we have to put our confidence in him. And we might not understand it. We might not can't see it. But we know that he wants what's best for us. And we want him to be in control of our lives. That he'll, um, He's the Holy Spirit is our GPS and it'll have where we turn left or we turn right or it'll lead and guide us as we go through this life journey and as we proceed to do whatever we're called to do. And sometimes life is just not easy all the time. You know, we look at the celebrities on TV and it looks like you know, because they're celebrity, they have plenty of money and they don't have to maybe worry about bills or, or worry about where their next meal is going to come from or that type of thing. But you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. You don't know about their relationships. You don't know even if they can sleep at night, they might have to take pills to help sleep at night. You don't know what they're worried about with the media, the next thing that the media may say about them. We're on the outside looking in. I know a lot of times my, I look at the, the basketball games, the NBA or NFL, and they pay their players so much money and all this, but you don't know still what goes on inside their homes. Everybody has problems, some type of problem. We all need God for something. We all need God's help in our lives for something. No one is perfect. Okay. Just because if I don't have problems with sickness, doesn't mean that I don't have problems in other areas. Okay. We all need God for something. That's why it's important for us to encourage one another and be there for one another. All right, and verse 11 says, and you are helping us by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for our safety. So I'm praying for you guys. I'm praying for my subscribers. I'm praying for your families. I'm praying for the viewers. And I ask you to continue to pray for me and my family because we all need prayer. And we all need God's help as we live in this crazy world that we live in and um, that he will give us safety. He will continue to bless us while we're here on this earth. And he will continue to give us his grace. Amen. That's what we want. Amen. And so I have one more scripture 
let me see if I can find it here that I want to share with you. And let me see if I can find John. Let's go to John 16, 33. All righty. John 16, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So, what God is saying in this scripture, he said that in me, you may have peace. All right. He said in me. Not in what somebody else is doing over there. You can't have peace by watching a reality show. Okay. You can't have peace by watching the news. But he said you can have peace in me. So we just stay focused on him. We just stay focused on his finished work. When we put our confidence in him, that he is God in our lives and he's not going to lead us wrong. Like I said a while ago, we might not understand it. Sometimes it can be, sometimes we feel like it's slow. That God is working slow <laughs> in our lives. It does. I mean, we tell the truth. Sometimes it's like grace is working real slow. I need help now. I need deliverance now. I need miracles now. I need breakthroughs now. Okay. And sometimes it just feels like it's slow. But, you know, the people, uh, the, the mothers of the church said that he's right on time. It may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Okay. And then it said, in the world, you will have tribulation. So we know that. We just talked about that, right? Yeah. But he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I didn't overcome the world. You didn't overcome the world. But Jesus has overcome the world for us. He's done it. Okay, so we know, just be encouraged that trouble don't last always. And know that you're not alone, even though sometimes you may feel that you're alone, you're not alone. And that we have Jesus, who is our helper. We have the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, to comfort us during these times. Okay. So don't give up whatever God has called you to do, to do. Don't give up on your dream. Don't give up on your aspirations. Don't give up on your future. Know that it's all going to be good and that you have a bright future in Christ. And uh, that's all I need to say today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this teaching of don't give up, regardless of what it looks like. Don't give up. Amen. If you're not saved, just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Savior and save me. And if you said that, guys, then you are a believer in Christ. And we welcome you to the family of God. Amen. And um, that's all I need to say on today. Um, don't forget to subscribe, guys. Um, also, if you like to donate uh, to this channel, feel free. I'll put the link up there on the screen. And um, that's it. So be blessed. And I hope to see you within another week. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.